in the audience, it doesn't matter who you are. They all sing, man, I feel like a woman. Yes, they do. It's an exclamation. <laughs> and <laughs> they all mean it in a different way. Absolute Radio Country. This is so exciting. Incredible artist who has sold over 100 million records. She's a trailblazer. She's an icon. She's a legend. And besides all that, she's appeared on stage not only riding a flying motorcycle, but also a live horse. Hey, Shania Twain. Hello. <laughs> How's it going? It's going great. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. And it's yeah. so exciting because you've got new music oh, yeah. as well. Waking up dreaming. We can't get enough of it. It's I absolutely so love it. It's so exciting for me. I'm sorry to talk over you, but I'm like, I'm really excited about it. It's such an energizing song. And I, you know, I wrote the idea quite a while ago. I always thought, you know, I love dreaming and I love escaping in my dreams. I think we all do, you know, especially when we're having a good dream. Mm. Um, and sometimes I try to go back to sleep to carry on dreaming the dream because yeah. it's like such a great dream. But Or to change the ending. <laughs> if I don't like yes. it, let, let me try that again. But I thought, you know, it's so much better instead of escaping into the dream being asleep is to be awake and dreaming. Mm. Dreaming while you're awake, you know, it's, I spend, I'm a dreamer, you know, I want to wake up dreaming and carry on, you know, with those wonderful, um, you know, my imagination and aspirations, all of those things. Uh, it's so great because you immediately put it on and it's impossible to sit still while you're listening to it. It's a real, yeah, you got to get a wiggle on. But that is the case with a lot of your songs as well. You know, so many of your hits throughout the years. Impossible to A, not have a wiggle to, B, not sing along to. There's just something, it's like that secret sauce in there. Is it honesty? Is it authenticity? Is it luck? How do you think that's happened? Uh, well, well, songwriting is is its own... Mm, magic. ...thing, yeah. So, you know, they're singing the song, delivering the song, obviously presenting the song with a production, um, which is all part of that, you know, how, how makes you want to move factor. But the phrasing and the lyrics is really what drives that, whatever that beat's going to be. And so I think a lot of it's in the phrasing. A lot of the songs that I do that are up-tempo are very chirpy. There's a sense of humor. Um, and they make me feel good. And I'm very energized delivering the song. I mean, this particular one, it's just so chirpy. And, and it brings me back to my favorite... Um, it's it's kind of a hybrid of the, I guess it would be the early 80s, mm. that smack snare, you know, that really drives you on, um, whether it's, you know, that footloose thing or, or the nine to five thing. It's yes. just kind of in that vein of like, you can't, it's infectious, the infectious smack on that snare. And it makes yeah. you smile. You're right. It makes yeah. you really happy. One of the things that you say in it, uh, tonight we're making our way to Mars. And I thought, you know, all of this talk about space travel and everybody's going to space. And would you ever go to space? I've never dreamt of going to space. Okay. I, I mean, I love this planet. <laughs> yes. Me too, you know, what? I mean, what can <laughs> yes. I say? I just love this planet. You don't have I, to stay there though. You could come back. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. But but would you? I think it's exciting, but no. And, and I'm adventurous. I'm very adventurous, but... Okay, fine. So Shania Twain is not going to space. You heard it here. I like gravity. First. I don't mind gravity. Yeah, no, gravity. My mind good. goes everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you can go my, to space my in feet your head. can stay on the ground, but my mind goes <laughs> everywhere. It already goes to space. <laughs> I was saying earlier um, to the guys in the studio that, that you're one of the few artists, and, and I put you in this category... Um, not stylistically necessarily, but um, with Dolly Parton in that, in terms of the audience that you attract. If the dance floor is getting a little thin, regardless of the crowd, I know that I can pop on a bit of, man, I feel like a woman. Right. And everybody's unfolding their arms and they're making their way to the dance floor. Um, what do you think that is? I try to, I, I do try to write music that is relatable. Mm hmm to others I, I write i write all kinds of music I, I shouldn't say that i try to write music that way but i i record the music so the music that i record to share with the public i try to focus on things that people can relate to and there's a, a big part of that is because i know that when i get up on stage 
I want to be with everyone. I want us to be on the same page. I want us to be sharing that sentiment. Mm. I want I want them to go, oh yeah, I feel like that too. That's what music brings us together. Yes. And it truly does. As a unit, as a universe, as a race. So the more we the, the more streamlined I can get on something I've personally experienced mm-hmm. that I know so many other people have as well. That is it's like I'm sharing it's like a big pajama party kind of concept. It's like, oh yeah, I know I saw that one too. Or, you know, you share things together. And you know, we don't know each other. Um when you're in concert, there's you know, hundreds of thousands of people out there. But you know them in that moment, in that lyric, in that song, in that sentiment. You've been there together at one point in your life. Yeah, and there's something really special about that energy that comes from a an event like that or a gig like that where you feel like everybody is on the same page and you can be dancing along and scream singing at the top of your lungs to a Shania Twain song with somebody that you would probably never speak to or or look at in in real life it's a really special thing to be able to do i think the camaraderie and what we have in common in the lyrics Mm. of the songs that i try to write them that way is the equalizer Mm. yeah you know that makes sense yes it it doesn't matter uh, in the audience it doesn't matter who you are they all sing man i feel like a woman Yes, they do. It's an exclamation. And <laughs> yes. they all mean it in a different way. Yeah. And they own they take ownership of that. And it it's the same thing with with the with the wedding songs, you know, from this moment on or mm. or you're still the one. Yes. Everyone so many people get married to those songs or engaged to those songs and again, it's every walk of life. It is a great equalizer. It's just love and it brings them together and it's beautiful to see people championing each other. I, I do, uh, um, from this moment on, with a couple that comes on stage, either they propose in that moment or they're um, celebrating their engagement or they're celebrating an anniversary or they've just been married, whatever it is. And it's every kind of couple you can imagine. So it's beautiful to watch the audience embrace that love and that moment it's all about them in that moment and it's quite emotional um considering that the world is so divided and so judgmental sometimes so um but everybody just wants to celebrate love so see this is the common denominator and music is the voice for that you're talking about um your audience championing each other but you've been a real champion of new artists, uh, when I saw you at Stagecoach six years ago or whatever it was, you brought out Kelsey Ballerini, and and she was just kind of starting yeah. in her career. And I thought, what a wonderful thing to do to give her that platform. And and um, in terms of you know being a woman in country music, there's a lot of talk overdue about uh, that whole situation with with diversity and representation within country music but i mean that's a that's a ceiling that that you've been breaking you know for your entire career do you feel like it's getting better for these younger artists or for you no i don't think it's getting better at all i think i mean i was very very lucky that i ended up a multi-genre artist i didn't end up remaining limited Mm mm-hmm so it was a lot of work. I mean, Up was three albums, you know, three different yes. sounds all together. So it's, it's, it's just a lot of extra work. But it's, I wouldn't be being myself if I wasn't showing all of those, um, you know, really being, being the hybrid artist that I am. And, but when I look at country music and female artists in country music, they are definitely not getting um, the, they're not getting the opportunities. And, I think, and I've always thought this, and this is even when I first came out in country, I, I would say to everyone around me, including radio, I would go to the radio stations. I said, I think you're. They would say, I'm, no one's going to like this. No one's going to want to hear this. I said, I think you're under- underestimating your audience. Mm. You have to. I'm. I'm appealing to the audience with my, with my person, with my inner self. I'm telling stories to people that I think they understand. 
And I think they need the opportunity to hear it and decide for themselves whether they relate or not. So the industry underestimated the relatability. And I think that that is happening again now. I think the industry is underestimating the relatability to females, uh, what females have to say to the female voice. And yeah, it, it bugs me. You know, really, if I'm just being really frank and I, I don't know what to do, I'm already sort of, I'm not in that predicament anymore. It's like it's, but I would love to help them fight their battle somehow. I just, you know, I don't know. And Maybe also, they just, they have to learn how to like fishing. I don't know. Uh, well, and, and uh, I, I don't know how, the, how, to, how to get them to fit in, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and and by being themselves, you know that that's the ultimate way to do it. But then people have an issue with people being themselves sometimes, particularly if it's if it's women, uh, if it's artists of color, uh, if it's yes. LGBTQI yes. artists, which you've also been a, a huge champion of as yes. well. I mean, we always think countries for everyone, and it looks to me like it's supposed to be the friendliest. Yeah, right. We we look at country music as being a, a very friendly, very um, you know, neighborly community kind of spirit uh, mentality. Mm -hmm. And the public are. They are. They are that. Um, but for some reason, I think the industry, I, I just don't really get it. It's a puzzle. I think for a lot of people that aren't the stereotypical, like, top 10 hit makers or in the top 10, whether they're hits or not, uh, the door just isn't there. So what, what are you supposed to kick down? Um, so we're just going to find another way. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm actually writing a song now about that. I won't tell you about it yet, but I'm going to write this one and, and get it out. I think it's a good, it's, it's, it's got a sense of humor, but um, it's, it's about that message, just about how, how do you make change? How do you get to the other side of what seems impossible? I think we're getting very close. I think the more we talk about it. Yes. And the more we uh, expose the normalcy of what it is to be, how beautiful it is and how important it is to be different and individual and unique to art itself, you know, we just have to keep repeating the message. Well, thank you for helping us lead the way. Um, and as long as there are people like you in the position that you're in, you know, helping with that fight, uh, we can all band together and hopefully make a change happen. Uh, listener question, Josh in Brixton, South London, he says, when did you realize that you were a superstar? Was there a moment where you thought, aha, this is different? It, I mean, the stardom came very fast, but I was so busy and so preoccupied with workaholic mode, like absolute total commitment, dedication to my work. I wasn't absorbing it at all. I didn't feel for a long time, did not feel famous. And there was this is really awkward moment. This was after Whose Bed of Your Boots Been Under came out. So, and I was already 30 and that was my first hit. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the airport and um, people people would look at me and smile, but like, like they really knew me. And I'm thinking, and I thought, Okay, are they just being friendly or do they know who I am? Am I supposed to respond? Am I supposed to shy away? Like, what do I... I didn't really know what to do or how to act. So I just went to the payphone and pretended I was on the phone the whole time so that I would be <laughs> preoccupied <laughs> until my flight was called because I just... It was just a very... I didn't... And people were like, who's Shania talking to for so long? <laughs> I know. So I was like, I didn't know how to deal with it. You know, I, right. I, I wasn't experienced. I didn't know, but... I did realize, okay, yeah, probably if I want to make my flight on time, even just for practical reasons, you need to have some sort of, you know, security or VIP service. Yeah, somebody so to help that you, you get through, yes. I realized that, because, you know, being a country guy, um, I always loved what you did, but um, I realized that you were bigger than country. I was on a, a holiday in Prague and it was one of those situations where there was an airport shuttle bus, somebody who was having a bachelorette party and, and there was like, you know, a, a bunch of gay guys and there was like an old couple and they had the radio on and I can't remember which song it was of yours came on, but it came on and everybody started singing along and suddenly everybody in that 
transport van to the airport was friends for a moment. You know, Adam Lambert said to me the other day, he said, you know, I never, I never liked country until I heard Shania Twain. Mm. Um, and I thought, well, that's the, that's a really, really huge compliment. And, you know, the, the country music, the element of my music is the songwriting where I get, where I learn how to write songs. Country music is always to me in the story and how you tell the story. And it's people like Dolly Parton and Willie Nelson and Chris Christopherson and Waylon Jennings, you know, these songwriters that were telling, I guess, kind of folk stories, real life stories that became, that ended up, you know, that's called country. Um, But as far as the musicality goes to country, I consider the Eagles country. I consider sure. Anne Murray country. I consider so many artists country in the realm that it's more of a storyteller's music. Mm. Um, just before you go, some quick fire questions. Yep. All right. Did you have a poster on your wall as a, a teenager and who was it? Kenny Rogers and Scott Bale. What's your favorite season? Fall. Early bird or night owl? Night owl. Are you a sweet or savory person? Savory. Favorite cocktail? Spicy margarita. Good. On the rocks, straight up? On the rocks. Of course. Classy. Slow Slow go. Um, Have you ever had a nickname? Yes. Would you reveal? Yep. My nickname as a kid was always Leany. Leany? Yeah. Why is that? Well, because my first name was named after my grandmother, Eileen. Oh, Okay. Irish, born in Ireland, and um, so everybody just called me Leany for short. Okay. Uh, Favorite color? Green. I was hoping you'd say leopard print, (laughs) and we can make that officially a color. color. (laughs) We do need to make that a color. If you said it was a color, it would officially be a color the world over. I'm sure of it. (laughs) Shania Twain, a joy, a pleasure, a delight. Thank you for coming in to see us. And thank you for the new music. We can't wait for the album and uh, news about the tour. Thank you. See You're us. awesome. Oh, I'll see you soon. Thank you.